Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to my quilting series. If you are just finding this video randomly, I will link you to video number one of the series, which is here. I'm taking you step by step through the process of how I create a quilt. And this is video number four. In today's video, I'm going to talk about basting and quilting. So we've already covered the tools, choosing a design, choosing and preparing a fabric and cutting and piecing the quilt and now we are going to baste it and quilt it. Basting your quilt means fastening the three layers together. Now what are the three layers? We've already created the quilt top so that would be layer number one and that is the design that you've chosen. For example the one behind me is an hourglass quilt so that would be your top. Layer number two that goes in the middle is your batting. You can get different kinds of batting. You can get cotton or bamboo or polyester or blends of the above. You can get high loft, which is quite puffy, and you can get low loft, which isn't. So it's up to you which kind of batting you wanna choose. As with most of the quilt design process, there isn't really a right or wrong. Just pick what you fancy, and that's going to be your middle layer. Now the back of your quilt, you want to have a piece that matches the size of the front of your quilt. This can be one big piece of fabric or it can be pieces of fabric that you've put together to create almost like a quilt top but usually it's a much simpler design. The back of this quilt that you see behind me is just cream fabric. Now if you are making for example a queen size quilt and you want to have a solid piece of fabric for the back you are going to have a hard time finding that on a roll from the store because the rolls of fabric in a regular fabric shop are not usually wide enough. So a way to get around that is to buy a queen size flat sheet. That's going to be a big enough piece of fabric for you to create a queen size quilt. Or you can piece together different fabric colors and designs to make a design for the back and then it will be big enough even if you're using fabric off the roll from the store. If you're putting a couple together then it doesn't matter that one isn't wide enough. This quilt that I've shown before is a single bed size and it has a solid piece of fabric on the back and I chose a patterned fabric for that. For this quilt, which was the background of last week's video, it has a pieced together design and it looks like this. Here is a pulled away shot to show you what I pieced together. I've got white at the top and blue at the bottom and then in between I have a row of the rainbow scraps. This quilt has a road design and on the back I pieced together green and I put a road on it and a kind of appliqued little cars on it and the quilting stitches went down the road so that that creates a little bit of a design on the back of that quilt. There's no right or wrong to how you want to do the back of your quilt. The only thing I would suggest is to consider which quilting design you're actually going to use when you stitch the layers together and how that will affect the design that you choose for the back of your quilt. This quilt for example I did kind of wavy stitches around the edge and then between the blocks of the quilt. So it didn't really affect this stripe design at all. The one that I showed you with the road, I knew I was doing kind of running stitch quilting for the road on the front. So I had to be very, very careful to line up the road at the back so that the quilting stitches would go in the right place. Okay, so you have your three layers. How do you put them together? You lay your backing down and you wanna lay that face down onto the ground. Working on a hard floor is a lot easier than working on a carpet. So if you have that option, go to your kitchen floor or put it on a table if it's a baby quilt. Work on a hard floor. It's just gonna be easier and your pins aren't gonna catch in the carpet. Of course, it's possible to do on carpet. You're just gonna to have to be a little more careful. So you're gonna lay down your backing fabric, whether it's a pieced one or a solid one, I'm just using a solid piece of fabric for this little quilt. And then you want to tape it down with masking tape. Try not to stretch and pull your fabric, but you do want to get it nice and smooth. Tape it down onto the floor and that's your first layer of the sandwich. The second layer is going to be your batting. So you wanna lay your batting out. Make sure that your backing and your batting are slightly bigger than your quilt top because you wanna trim them all square when you finish and you don't want any bits around the edge where your back or your batting isn't big enough. So it helps to just make sure that they're slightly bigger than your quilt top. So you lay your batting down and you smooth that over and that is layer number two of your sandwich. 
Layer number three of your sandwich is your quilt top. So you're gonna lay that down face up and you're gonna, again, smooth it over, make sure that it's lying nice and flat and there's no bunching seams or anything. And now you're going to fasten your layers together. There's a couple ways of doing this. You can use um, a running stitch and baste by sewing the layers together very loosely. What I prefer to do is use basting pins. So these are like safety pins, but they have a bend in them. That curve helps you get down through the layers and back up again. So I'm just going to put a pin in maybe every other block and hold the three layers together. I don't want to catch anything underneath. Like I said, if you're on a carpet, try not to catch carpet with your pin. I'm just gonna scoop it in, scoop it out and fasten those pins together. Now that your three layers are together, you can unfasten the tape from the floor and you can move it around, which obviously you're gonna to have to do when it comes to quilting. Now there's different ways of quilting or tying your quilt. Basically, you just wanna fasten all three layers together. You can do that by putting a big stitch down and up and tying it, that's called tying a quilt. You can do that with a button if you want. You can do some hand quilting and just take a needle and thread and go down and up through the fabric. You can do big running stitches like I did in the quilt that I showed you with the roads or like I did in this quilt. I just did the white blocks and I did a big running stitch around the edges. You can also do what's called stitch in the ditch. You can do this by hand or with your sewing machine and sew right in the seam where your blocks meet, which is kind of like invisible quilting on the front, although you will see it on the back. You can also quilt on your sewing machine and I recommend getting what's called a walking foot to do the quilting and this foot instead of holding the fabric like this and the feed dogs pushing the fabric through which is how you would normally have your sewing machine work what it does is as the feed dogs pull the fabric through at the bottom it kind of pulls it through the top so it does this and it it doesn't just stay in one place and have your fabric pull as you go through the sewing machine it all makes sense when I come to quilt and I will show you now machine quilting, you can do any design you want within reason. There are ways of doing kind of freehand quilting on a regular sewing machine. I haven't mastered that. Some sewing machines regulate the stitches. So if you move the fabric faster, it'll sew faster. And if you move it slower, it'll sew slower. I don't have one of those sewing machines. So unless I'm very careful to go at exactly the same speed, my stitches are gonna be all different lengths. So I haven't actually mastered kind of free hand quilting with my machine. I only use the walking foot. For free hand quilting with a sewing machine, you're gonna use a different foot. You're gonna use the darning foot. But like I said, I haven't actually mastered that, so that's not what I'm gonna show you. I use the walking foot to not only sew straight lines, but also wavy lines, so long as they're kind of long waves and nothing with angles. So this is what I'm talking about. So for this quilt, you can see my quilting stitches here. So I did wavy lines, outside and inside the border and then in between all of the blocks you can see the lines there as well and that's how I quilted that quilt for this baby quilt I just chose to do long straight lines and if you can see by the way the fabrics pulled slightly I did it one way and then the other one way and then the other just to keep it even so this is how the front looks I will insert a few pictures here showing you the different quilting designs I've done on quilts because some of the quilts I've given away.
The other way of machine quilting is to send it out to somebody who has a long arm quilter. This is a great big machine. It has a frame that you roll your quilt onto and it has a long arm that will then move across the quilt surface. And you can do all kinds of designs with that. The quilter will either move it herself and kind of almost draw with the needle as it quilts or you can pre-program designs and then set it to go and it will just do that design all over your quilt. I obviously don't have a long arm quilting machine to show you so if you just search on YouTube for long arm quilting you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. I just prefer to do my own quilting because it keeps the costs down. Now if you are quilting on your own sewing machine you're going to be limited on the size that you can do. That is one of the reasons I hand quilted the quilt that I showed you before that I made for my friend Jessie because it was queen size and I just couldn't wrestle it through my sewing machine. So now that I've rambled on about quilting, for the quilt I'm making I've chosen to machine quilt it myself and I'm using a green thread and now I'm going to show you that. The first thing I'm going to do is remove the regular foot off my sewing machine and put my walking foot on. So I unscrew that. And slide out the normal foot. And then the walking foot goes onto here. So I've unscrewed this and removed my regular foot. And I'm going to take my walking foot and this part here is going to clip onto this part here which moves up and down as you sew. And then this part is going to fasten on here where you would normally fasten on your foot. So let's line it all up on and then screw this tight. I don't want it coming loose or falling off in the middle of quilting a line. That's how it looks when it's all set up. A walking foot will usually also come with this doodad and what you do with it is you slide it into a hole there and then you can use it as a guide so if you're sewing quilting lines this far apart you just use that as a guide for where your next line will be. I explained the foot incorrectly earlier it's not the foot that kind of moves it's these white bits which are also feed dogs so these jaggedy bits underneath are called the feed dogs and they move as you sew and they pull the fabric through so a walking foot has feed dogs as well that moves and pulls the fabric through so that the top and bottom are being pulled through evenly and the top isn't dragging. The first thing I'm going to do before I begin quilting is I'm going to take a little piece of scrap fabric and put it on the edge and make a sandwich there of the backing, the batting and fabric on the front and do a little bit of a test line just to make sure that my tension's correct and that everything's working properly before I actually tackle my quilt. All looks fine, front and back. So I'm happy to begin quilting. So I've decided to quilt this in a zigzag pattern. So I'm just gonna go from corner to corner that and just repeat that on each row all the way down. Also I should mention when you're using a walking foot you need to have your speed at medium you can't go high speed with it.
Here you go, one row done and nine more to go. So I've been working from this corner across down each row and I've reached halfway. So rather than continuing to roll this and stuff this into my sewing machine, I'm just gonna flip it around and work my way in from the other end. Once you have finished quilting your quilt, you're gonna trim the edges. You want to get them all nice and square. So measure the top and the bottom of your quilt. Make sure that it's even and then get your mat, your rotary cutter and a quilting ruler and slice through the layers to make a perfectly straight edge. and then your quilt is ready for binding, which will be next week's video. I hope you found this video and this series helpful so far. If you are quilting along, I would love to know how your quilt is coming along. So let me know what you're working on. Next week, I am gonna talk about finishing up your quilt. So if you are quilting along, you have a week to quilt your layers together. Once next week's video is up, I will link it here. Otherwise, the playlist will be linked down below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.